I got a uh, cramp. Oh, All ooh, of a uh, sudden. Ew, ooh, that one really hurt. Uh, let me get off. Welcome to That's Good Sports. I am Brandon. When the Bengals play the Chiefs, I think we should simply call them the Cincinnati Victory Formations. Joe Burrow has done more to harm Chiefs than the U.S. government. Week 13 in the NFL was wild, and my favorite Bengals-themed music group dropped an all-time banger in Defensive Line. The perfect Neil Diamond parody. Hendrickson, stopped and ripped, they'll stop you. Defensive Line. So let's go through the best and worst plays, players, games, and moments from the week, starting with the best catch. Well, if you ask my mom, I'm the best catch, but damn, this one-handed grab by Devontae Adams, who helped lead the Raiders to their third straight win against two division opponents was pretty insane. Devontae Adams went off against the Chargers. Worst, seeing Drew Locke dancing with Pete Carroll and knowing that it will haunt my dreams as a Broncos fan. And here we go, best quarterback is going to one Geno Smith who bounced back from a heartbreaking overtime loss against the Raiders to defeat the John Wolford led LA Rams. Smith tossed three touchdowns, the game winner included, plus 367 total yards through the air on his way to a 116 passer rating. Smith now has put up six straight games with a passer rating of at least 100, which fucking ties Russell Wilson's franchise record. At this point, you really have to wonder what the Seahawks are going to do with that early draft pick they're getting from the Broncos because I don't think they're going to use it on a quarterback anytime soon. And hats off to Geno to hand the Rams an L, officially making LA at 3-9 the worst defending Super Bowl champions ever. Best moment, DK Metcalf loves playing against Jalen Ramsey and when Geno Smith put him in motion, Metcalf beckoned for Ramsey to come follow him. He couldn't because they were in zone, but Metcalf caught a pass on that play and late in the game, he caught the game winner over Jalen Ramsey. This was an all-time cocky moment from a wide receiver and he totally backed it up. Please subscribe here if you like. Today's episode is sponsored by SeatGeek. I know, it's not for great reasons, but right now you can get Broncos tickets for very, very, very cheap. If you've been thinking about going to a game, I'd use SeatGeek to get your tickets now. Lower level seats are going for less than $200. That's an amazing deal. The green dots in the app signify a good deal, and look, almost all of the Broncos tickets are green. Speaking of green, just use my code that's good for $20 off your first purchase to save some green. See what I did there? Based on uh, how so many of my jokes don't land here on my YouTube channel, you probably didn't know that I love going to see stand-up comedians. And there's tons of great shows right now, and hopefully I'll take notes if I go see, say, Bill Burr. Uh, again, code that's good, and feel good about your purchase knowing that every ticket is backed by SeatGeek's buyer guarantee so you can return your tickets ahead of the event with Swaps. Worst QB? Well, I was going to give it to Deshaun Watson no matter what. So it's going to Deshaun Watson, but he really earned this one. The Browns scored 27 points and did so uh, without a single touchdown on offense, without a single touchdown from Watson. That is the fourth most points without a TD in the last 90 seasons. Watson threw an awful looking end zone pick to Jalen Petrie and ended the game 12 of 22 for just 131 yards. Worst offense? Well, you know what they say, the worst offense is a best defense. And the Texans offense could only muster 12 points against the Browns, but it wasn't the lack of scoring that makes them the worst offense this week. It's the fact that they gave up two touchdowns on a scoop and score and a pick six. When you take that all into account, the Texans offense accounted for negative two points in their loss to Cleveland. Even the Broncos were like, 
Oh, gross, Houston. Can you even call yourself an offense? Hell, two of the points scored came from the Texans' defense. Nick Chubb stuffed for a safety. I haven't seen a Chubb recoil like that since... Well, since I walked in on my grandparents having intercourse. That's right. But the real question you should be asking is why did I walk into my grandparents' room with the chub? Best individual performance, I'm giving this one to share between Arthur Juan Brown of the Philadelphia Eagles, who put up 119 yards and a pair of tutties against the team that traded him, the Tennessee Titans, and his QB, Jalen Hurts. Now, Brown said this one meant a lot to me, and he played like it. He produced the widest open touchdown of the week, maybe of the year. And he got there by trucking corner Christian Fulton, who was flagged on the play for illegal contact. Why you gotta do him like that, refs? He's already embarrassed and you're gonna throw a flag? Now, Brown has nine touchdowns and he's closing in on a thousand yards already, which is pretty special in an offense that gets so many of those yards on the ground. Jalen Hurts hit a career high in passing yards, threw three touchdowns, rushed for one, and finished with the highest passer rating of the weekend. He actually completed one more pass than Geno Smith, uh, 29 to 28, on the same amount of attempts. And the only reason I didn't give Hertz the best QB award this week is because the Titans have the second worst passing defense in the league. That said, Philly ran for 363 last week, threw for 380 this week. That's an insanely dangerous offense and became the first team to go over 350 and run and pass since 1933. Best offense though goes to the Lions who scored on their first eight possessions and they ultimately dropped 40 on the Jaguars. What's unique about this game is while they managed to put up points on offense, the defense actually held up and did their part, holding the Jags to just two touchdowns in the win. This game also had my best catch by Amon Ra 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 St. Brown bobbling the ball inside the five, absorbs a big hit, and manages to hang on to the ball at the one yard line. The Sun God finished with two touchdowns, 114 receiving yards, but DJ Chark going against his old team produced 98 yards on five catches and got the game ball from Danny Campbell. And I think a shout out is in order for Lions sixth round rookie James Houston, who had three sacks against the Yags. Uh, he was so good that I thought Jay Houston was indeed Justin Houston. The Lions have won four of five and nearly completed No Nut November, but slipped up just once when the Bills beat Goff. Best defense? Well, it's actually going to the Minnesota Vikings for managing to contain the open flame that is the white hot Mike White. White dropped back and threw the ball 57 times in this game and Minnesota's defense made sure none of those passes found the end zone. The Jets kicked five field goals to start this game. Sure, the Vikings might have had no plan for how to uh, cover Garrett Wilson, but you know what? Not many other defenses have figured out how to cover Garrett Wilson yet either. Uh, Minnesota also picked off White twice, including one that sealed the game for the Vikings and helped them improve to 10-2 and on the season, becoming just the second team this year with double-digit wins. And this game features my worst First play, uh, I've got to give it to Braxton Berrios who dropped this pass in the end zone and may one day be solely responsible for being the end of the tiny white slot receiver. Best play? Well, the best play is going to go to Christian Watson who sealed the Packers victory with this 46 yard end around for a touchdown. This was Watson's eighth touchdown in the last four games, which tied him with Randy Moss for the most TDs scored in a four game stretch. Easily the best and easiest Watson to root for this week. The rookie out of North Dakota State has really come a long way from week one when he committed one of the most brutal drops of the season. Worst moment? Well, the worst moment has to be Jimmy Garoppolo suffering a broken foot early in the 49ers victory over the Dolphins. 
After the game, we learned that Garoppolo is done for the season. He needs surgery. This is the third time in his 49ers career that his season has been cut short due to injury. San Francisco will turn back to Mr. Irrelevant, Brock Purdy, who actually played pretty damn well in relief of Jimmy G throwing two touchdowns and uh, executing Kyle Shanahan's offense with a lot of composure. The most handsome quarterback in the NFL is replaced by a man named Purdy. Hmm, I think the NFL is scripted. I do have to give Purdy the best fake handoff award because he fooled his own running back here. Best finish. Well, this is going to the San Francisco 49ers who picked up the slack on defense and cemented their win against the Dolphins with a Nick Bosa sack that led to a Dre Greenlaw scoop and score. Fred Warner also had a late pick of Skylar Thompson for good measure, but the Niners did a good job responding to both the Garoppolo injury and Trent Sherfield going the distance on the Dolphins' first play from scrimmage. Worst stat? Well, this hurts because I love this player, but Jamal Williams scored his 14th touchdown of the season in the Lions win over the Jags, but of course, people couldn't help but point out that that's the same number of touchdowns as the Broncos have scored all season. Denver also took the first L since 1995 after committing zero turnovers, forcing two turnovers, and holding their opponent to 10 points. It's raining shit here in Denver. Best game? Well, I'm giving this game to the tie this week between the Giants and Commanders at 2020. It doesn't take 2020 vision to see that ties are hilarious and that playing for 70 minutes without declaring a winner made Brian the balls of steel look like, well, pretty much like you'd expect him to look in this situation. Taylor Heineke and Terry McLaurin both balled out, but it was rookie Jahan Dotson who nodded up the game with one of the nastiest spin moves I've ever seen. Unfortunately, uh, no, no one scored after that play. The Giants and the Commanders are now tied with seven wins and a tie each, but the Commies have five losses now to the G-Men's four. And a new one coming in, best Chiefs loss? goes to the Chiefs, losing to the Bengals. The Chiefs lose to the Bengals 27 to 24, just like they did in the AFC Championship game. In the last three losses to the Bengals, the Chiefs have had a lead in the fourth quarter and in all of those games, costly mistakes for the Chiefs watched victory slip away. And in this one, it was one Travis Kelsey with a fumble because he refused to be tackled. Just go down, Travis. Oh boy, the hubris here. How many times did they cut away to a sad Travis Kelsey on the sideline? Not nearly enough. Defensive line. Ah, let me get off. Ah, let me get off. Uh, Samaj J. P. Ryan filling in for the concussed Joe Mixon. Totaled 155 yards from scrimmage. P. Ryan really pounded it down the Chiefs' pee holes. And fuck, man, I think we were all reminded of just how talented receiver Jamar Chase is in the receiving game. Burrow really had Chase and Justin Jefferson as his receivers at LSU. They should have their title revoked cause that shit's unfair. Worst game? So I'm going to give it to the Steelers and the Atlanta Falcons. Probably the most interesting thing that happened from this game was Mike Tomlin snapping at this fan. Coach Tomlin, let's go for the win man. man. Uh, Najee Harris does get my best stiff arm award here. Uh, the Steelers won, and Kenny Pickett looks like he's starting to round into shape, but good lord, I don't even think any Falcons fans showed up to this game. I will give the Mercy Award to Safety Minka Fitzpatrick, who probably could have scored here on this game-ending pick, but kindly ran out of bounds. And my worst finish is going to the Indianapolis Colts for allowing 33 points in the fourth quarter to the Cowboys. The only team to ever score more points in the fourth quarter is shockingly the 2007 Detroit Lions against the Bears. This was a two point game going into the last 14 minutes uh, of the affair. It was 21-19. 
And the final score ended up 54 to 19. It's hard to fathom a collapse of that magnitude in so little time. It's almost like the Colts fired a good head coach prematurely and brought in, I don't know, Jeff Saturday to save them. The Cowboys have scored 40 or more points this season eight times. Two more than the Chiefs and four more than the Bills and the Bengals. And they fucking rolled with Cooper Rush for six and a half games this season. CeeDee Lamb never skips and is never down. Tony Pollard is a long touchdown machine. Five of 30 plus yards this season, which is a Cowboys franchise record in a single season. The way they have perfectly integrated the pass and the run game would make 15 year old Jerry Jones sick to his stomach. Best defender? Well, I'm going to give it to Cowboy safety Malik Hooker, who was playing against his old team and not only picked off a Matt Ryan pass, but also recovered a fumble and took it 38 yards back the other way for a tutty. After injuries derailed most of his career in Indy, it's good to see Hooker catch on in Dallas. Also, it's probably not the first time a Hooker has taken revenge on Jim Irsay. Ah, oh, let me get off. And that's it, your best and worst of NFL Week 13. Uh, thanks for watching football stuff here on That's Good Sports. Subscribe if you didn't hate this video and come back tomorrow for the Week 14 Power Rankings and see where your team stands.